just to be clear it is now I don't know if that's coming through on the iPhone there if I hold it there but it's 10.01 p.m. I left the house this morning at 8, I got in at 9.30pm and the trains were all messed up so it meant two hour, two hours, yeah, about two and a half hours to get home tonight which is ridiculous and this is definitely the latest I've ever decided to do a vlog. I literally made a cup of tea, I was heading down here and thought actually um, make a vlog out of this, out of this uh, particular subject. And uh, I want to read you part of an email from one of my Skype students. I'm going to call Sarah. She's a professional musician herself. Sarah's not her real name, by the way. Uh, she's basically um, talking about um, life just being really busy. She said here, anyway, um, uh, she's got her lesson for the next time in the day because she missed her last lesson. But she says she tried the chart system and it was great and I practiced every day until I went back to teaching. And I haven't managed to practice at all. I did all my planning, my orders, a few gigs, finished all my billing and a small amount of my tax return. I'm getting a bit fed up with never quite getting to practice and you must be getting fed up as I'm not getting anywhere. Any suggestions? Well my first thing as I've said to her is I'm not getting fed up with her. <laughs> you know I kind of appreciate having some another professional who's willing to still have a sax lesson and you know as I said in this one I still have my own sax lesson as well. Not as much as I'd like but it's still I still find it very useful um, to go to a teacher especially a teacher who could do things I'm not particularly good at, things that don't come naturally to me. So I've been having lessons trying to learn to play more inside because I can play out, um, I can play that Coltrane stuff, have been able to do that Coltrane S stuff, I can't play that Coltrane, but I can get that kind of stuff off the bat because I've been working on it for a number of years and it's kind of my thing, but I really appreciate people who can play inside really well, really get inside the changes. So I've answered Sarah's email anyway, but I wanted to, I was just walking back from the train station and thought actually it would make quite a good vlog. Because I left the house so early this morning and I've got back so late, I haven't obviously touched my saxophone, which means having gone past the 100 days, I may miss and break the chain for the first time in 104 days, I think. And I was sorely tempted to do it. In fact, before I started the chart, I definitely would have done and there's definitely a huge part of me that would have rather just sat down with Katie, watched some TV or played on my Xbox or something and just chilled out because I've had a pretty mental day. It's been interesting. Um, I had my digital day in Westminster and then I was at YouTube uh, learning all sorts of things about sound design. It was really fascinating. Um, and then the trains were all messed up which when I got back late. But to address Sarah's question and hopefully your question watching this, you can't find the time to practice. You have to make the time. And yet time is this uniform thing. We all have the same 24 hours in the day. And to a certain degree, we all have different control over the choices we can make that day. Excuse me. And some days it just isn't practically possible to practice. And that's okay, you know, you don't have to stick to this regime I'm doing. All I will say is, sticking to this regime means that I want to get the saxophone out of its case every day and do something. Even if it's nearly 10pm at night, I can't make any noise because the kids are in bed asleep, because I can't use a metronome, I can't do any transcribing. So what I was doing there, as you probably heard, was quite a lot of um, this silent saxophone practice that I've spoken about here. Um, overtones, but really kind of playing that really soft saxophone subtone. Because what this does is it really Really works on your embouchure. It really gets the embouchure in there. And then I ran a digital pattern, um, 8453 that Chris Potter gave me, um, in various different permutations. And I'm probably going to go back to it in a minute just to try and get the fingers. And it's slowly, it's annoying not having a metronome. I mean, I could have probably put my headphones on and used a metronome from the phone, but um, you know, it's more important for me that I got the saxophone out to practice. And this is what this chart does. It gets you to do it. You can't find the time to practice. And the reason I know that is that's the way I used to be. Now I have to make time and I have to make the decisions. It's tough to say, but you 
have to make the decision to practice. There's a great saying, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it thirsty. You've got to thirst for it. I'm a big football fan. And I mean, football. That's what you Americans call soccer, but it's, it is football. We won't go into that debate. Anyway, Sir Alex Ferguson always used to talk about his players and he would sell a lot of players. I remember hearing the interview about him selling three of his top players at the end of the 95 season. And what he questioned was, were they hungry enough? I see a lot of younger musicians coming on the scene who are really hungry, who will do gigs for nothing, and older people as well. And I'm just kind of not quite got that. I've got hunger, but I've got hunger for a different, different type of gig now. I don't hunger just to play any old gig. I want to play good gigs, but that's, a, that's for another subject. In light of what I've said with Sarah's, let's do a little bit more of a Q&A. Benjamin uh, spoke on my last vlog about, um, here he is on a 2.5 ZZ, may a seven, maybe one day a 3.5. Uh, Benjamin, don't get too worried about reed strengths. As I said in the vlog, when I was talking about um, mouthpiece, you know, what's your reed mouthpiece combo? Um, it's a very personal thing. And what works for me might not work for you. You know, you've got to find a setup that you're comfortable on that you can make the best sound on. I find 3.5 is good. I was on 4.5, 4 hards on my hard link. I can't play those on this uh, metal link. So, you know, find what you're comfortable with and go from there. Richard asked, uh, did I order the Greg Fisherman books direct from Greg? Uh, is they quite price on Amazon? Yes, uh, order them directly from Greg. Alfonso says, what can be the outline plan for 100 days practice? Wow, um, get into a routine, get a practice planner, a bit like as I was saying to Sarah, you've got to make the time to practice, um, and set fundamental things that you need to work on. The two fundamental things I'm always talking about are good tone, good time. So if you get those two things combined in what you're doing with practice, today I didn't get much time work done because I've no, I can't play a metronome, it's just gonna to be too loud. Samuel asks, what's the best way to learn all your major scales or any music scales? Um, best way to do it is by ear. I used to have masses of scale books. Um, I've still got a load, I've got like the Theosaurus of Scales and Patterns, which is an excellent resource, but I can't remember them. So the best way to do it is to learn the major scales by ear. If you are, most people can do the Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Fa, Fa, so, La, Ti, Da. <laughs> it's been, it's late. Um, but yeah, if you can do those scales, just find them on the instrument and then just play them and, you know, change the starting note each time because if you can sing it, you should be able to play it. Rogers talks about uh, on the Zoom review, getting an external mic for the iPhone. Yeah, uh, if anybody's got any recommendations for a good mic for the iPhone, let me know. Amanda was asking about, not a vlog, but a gear review about the mouthpiece silencer. Perhaps I need to do a little bit on the vlog on that. I don't use it very often. I suppose I could use it tonight if I wanted to, but I find that doing that subtone exercise requires more control and gives me what I need to do, which is to back off and use more air. So, sorry Amanda, uh, where do I get it from? I would suggest sax.co.uk or your local music shop. Graham makes a good point. He says he's read bad reports of the link ligatures, even from a base, even from the, sorry, even from the saxophone tech that he has, but he thinks they're great, such a great design. Yes, I agree. And I'm not using that Winslow copy, that sax sax much at all now. I'm just using the plain um, ligature. One thing, just to quickly highlight, I noticed on, um, on the last vlog I did, when I was doing those different reads, when I did the edit, I noticed that there wasn't a lot of difference between the the way the read sounded on this microphone. Now, I know this is just the camp, well, it's a, a shotgun mic on top of the uh, camera. It's not the main, my main studio mics, but there wasn't a lot of difference in the sound that, the, um, sorry, there wasn't a lot of difference on the mic in the edit as there was to me. I felt huge differences in the sound playing it and feeling it, but actually the external thing was very different, which is an important thing to notice that of course, it might be making a huge difference to you, but what is the sound you know, to the listener? What does it sound like to them? I think that's enough q and I'm gonna try and do a regular Q&A, so please do keep your comments coming in. I'll try and do one every few weeks or so, and you know, try and catch up the comments, so and keep watching, of course. So I'm gonna knock, I'm gonna finish today's vlog. It's been a weird vlog, it's literally a last minute decision to do a vlog today. I wasn't, didn't think I was gonna get around to doing it. The main thing being, of course, my main message, you've got to make time, you can't find it. Um, vlogs coming up in the next few weeks about getting gigs, vlogs talking about organizing gigs, um, 
promotion and those kind of things coming up and a whole lot of other stuff. I've got to do that um, Chris Potter mouthpiece versus an ordinary Tone Master um, comparison as well and loads of other things. But I'm going to finish the vlog now because I want to go and talk to my wife. I want to cross off my block for today to make sure I've done 105 and I'm going to end the vlog now. So thank you. Bye-bye. <gasps> I nearly forgot. Please subscribe. It really helps. I was at YouTube today and I need to get past my next milestone of subscribers so I can offer you guys greater content, some better ideas and loads of other stuff that YouTube have, but I've got to break certain barriers on my subscriber count. And don't forget, if you haven't already watched the other last vlog, sorry, here. Yeah.